Hello YouTube! Welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney and this is Courtney in Books. Welcome to No Makeup Courtney. Um, I just decided I didn't want to wear makeup today because I'm out of makeup wipes and I don't want to like go through washing it off. I think I, I put a little bit of eyeliner on, like a very very little eyeliner on, and like I, I put a little bit of eyebrows on because I actually don't have eyebrows. I'm part Asian and I just don't have eyebrows it's, and I don't have eyelashes either. I have taken to wearing fake eyelashes as of late so I'm trying to learn how to put them on quickly so it's less tedious and I'm trying to learn not to care that they're on my eyes because I'm usually very irritated by that kind of stuff but anyways enough about my naked face. Let's get into it. Like I said, I've been in a reading slump and I feel like that's something that you don't really hear booktubers or book talkers say very much, but it happens to everybody and I just haven't been reading that much. I haven't been able to get through books. Like normally if I'm in a really huge reading kick, I can finish a book in a night or a day or two days at most. Lately it's been taking me like a week or more to finish books, so I just have like not as many books to talk about. The ones that I have read have been really, really good. I have been working so hard on the final edits of my upcoming Enemies to Lovers Siren Pirate Romance that is coming out in October, and I'm trying to send out all of my ARCs or ARCs, whatever. I don't know why I can't say ARC, it just feels weird to me, but I'm sending out all of my ARC um, copies very very soon so I want that to be really squared away so I've been super super focused on that. This is convention season for me so I have tons of events coming up that I'm trying to prepare for and I just you know my head has been all over the place getting up in the morning and, and recording a video is kind of like the last thing that comes to mind even though I really really want to keep up with this channel but anyways enough about the reasons why I haven't been posting let's get to the meat of this video I'm doing a wrap-up of books that I've read recently not so much like the past month but just in the past like three months that I've not been doing monthly wrap-ups I'm just gonna go over the books that I have read and I'm actually going to go over <coughs> the ones that I DNF'd as well. I don't usually do that, but I've decided I might as well. The ones that I really, really liked. I'm gonna start with Slaying the Shadow Prince by Helen Schwerer. Schwerer. I'm sorry. This book is a fantasy and it is an enemy, enemies to lovers. It is about this man. His name is Talamir, which I think is a really cool name, and he is a shadow daddy. I mean, for lack of a better term, he he's this guy with really big wings, he's a warrior, and I read this book a few months ago, so if I get a few things wrong, I apologize. He is the thing that the whole world is fighting against. It's I don't remember what they're called, but they're these demonic things and the whole world is basically trying to fight them. And you have these like certain little sects of people, these people that fight them. He is, he's called something. He is part of something. A few moments later. There's a material that makes weapons and her bracelet is made of this material and it reacts a certain way to him, which is, Jesus Christ. They have to travel together. It's very tense. Things happen. They are very attracted to each other. Secrets come out and it's hot and it's awesome. And I love her because uh, her name is Drew and I love her. She has a pet hawk that like does all these things. Like it's like a guard dog. It goes off and it, it scouts ahead and it comes back and it, it it's awesome. And anyways, it was a good book. Slaying the Shadow Prince. It's a good book. Jesus, a month away from YouTube and I have no idea how to talk on camera. Next, I read Kaylin by Nancy Cummings and it is a alien romance. It is number two in Warriors of Sangrin, which I didn't know it was part of the series. I just, I'm blind to that sort of thing, especially if it's a standalone. I just won't really like, if it's a standalone in a standalone series, I just don't keep track. And I just came across this book and I read it and I thought it was pretty decent. Part of the very common theme with aliens is the whole faded mates and genetically being matched to, to somebody that is genetically compatible with you when it comes to aliens and humans. And that happens in this book. We have a doctor, I believe she's a doctor. 
I'm sorry. This is another book that I read like three or four months ago. But anyway, so she's like a doctor. And she is assigned to partner up with this alien doctor. And they really get on each other's nerves at first, and then they start to get attracted to each other. And then something happens where she is injured and she is forced to go get medical treatment. And in doing so, they find out that she is a genetic match to the guy that she has been partnered up with this whole time. And drama ensues because she does not want a partner. Um, there were some things, some medical complications beforehand that made her think that she would never find a partner and she kind of came to terms with that and now finding she is genetically matched to this alien who she doesn't really get along with, you know, creates some drama. Anyways, it was cute. I thought it was interesting. It kind of has that very typical formula for alien romance, but I've said before that while I enjoy finding things outside of that sort of formula a lot, I don't mind reading the formula sometimes. It's a palette cleanser, you know? It's always safe, you know what's gonna happen. I thought it was cute. The next one that I read is Alien Outlaw, which is part one, number one in Outlaws of Deep Space by Carlotta Page. And I have been following this author on Instagram for quite a while, and I've, I've seen her posting about her books for quite a while, and I finally picked one up, and I really, I enjoyed it. So you have Jessica, who is a total Aussie, and she and her Aussie friends, uh, you know, they're all single. They all need friends, and she basically creates this club for women who need friends. <laughs> and their first meetup is in a bar or a coffee shop, I can't remember. And they're, during their first meetup, they all get abducted by aliens. So all these women who literally became friends like five seconds ago are all abducted by aliens. They end up crash landing on an alien planet, and the ship full of alien outlaws ends up on the same planet. I can't remember if they were chasing the ship, if like they saw it crash land or what, or if it was just total coincidence, but they end up on the same planet. Now our girl Jessica takes it upon herself to go out and try to find help on this crazy alien planet, and she runs into Vorden, who is, he's got a tail, he wears like a skin tight suit that looks like a second skin, there is a language barrier, which is always kind of cute because they have to try and communicate in different ways. And it turns into sort of a survival romance because they're traipsing across this alien planet together trying to figure out what each other is saying. And in doing so, they become increasingly attracted to each other. They go back for her friends. It's it's really cute. It's, it's a safe alien romance if that is what you like. And I enjoyed it and I will probably be, probably be reading the next book in the series very soon. But again, I have just been moving so slow when it comes to my reading, and that probably isn't going to change until I get my ARC copies out for my ARC readers uh, of the book that I have coming out in October. So, that's just how it is, okay? It's writing or reading. I can't always focus on both. The next book that I read is Pirate's Passion by Lisa Kessler. This was a cute book. I've read a lot of cute books this month. I don't know what, I mean, usually I'm very into like darker books and more intense books, but I don't know. I guess I've just been needing some cuteness in my life because these are all very cute books and they all were very happy and lots of cinnamon roll boyfriends, which is not something that I am typically into, but again, I must be in a mood. So Pirate's Passion is a little bit different. It is a pirate romance, but when I say different, I mean because we have Charlotte who is basically a historian. And she has been researching all this pirate stuff for a very long time, and they've been searching for this relic, AKA the, uh, uh, what is that? What is that goblet or the, the, the holy, there's a cup, the holy cup of... Why am I having a brain fart right now? The, the, the holy grail, the grail, the holy grail, okay? We have this pirate band. They're basically like, I, I mean, the way it came off in the book is they're basically like a rock band that sings pirate shanties, which I think is really cool. It kind of reminds me of, if you've never heard of The Crack, uh, they are on YouTube. Shall pass the perilous ass. I am the Shay and got it. Hey! 
when she was describing this band, that is what I thought of. I thought of The Crack. I love that band so damn much and I listen to them so much and they come around to our Renaissance Festival here in Arizona every year and I am there in the audience every year because they're great. Anyways, that is what this band came off to, uh, or came off as to me. And they're very famous and I can't remember what they're called, like the Scallywags or something, something really like generic like that. And turns out this is a pirate crew that has been around since like the 18th century, 18th or 19th century, because they drank from the Holy Grail and now they're all immortal pirates. And they are in search of the Holy Grail in order to take another sip because their immortality, I guess you need to like refresh it now and then. And Charlotte gets wrapped up in this. She starts talking to, I believe his name is Keegan, and he is the leader or the captain of this crew. And she ends up getting into a relationship with him. Obviously she finds out who he really is and she is a big fan, so <laughs> she's like super into that. And they end up going after this holy grail together. It's very adventurous, very Indiana Jones, but with like pirates and stuff. So again, cute, it was adorable. And then I read Brutal Keeper, which I guess is a little bit more on the dark side, but I read this a couple of months ago, and I already talked about this in another video, but Brutal Keeper is a short alien romance. It is number three in the Federation's Keepers. Again, I didn't know this was part of a series, and I didn't really care because the series is just a bunch of standalones. And it is by Alexander Norton. It is a short read, and I've been on the lookout for a lot of those lately because I've just not had a very good attention span. And Brutal Keeper is, it's a darker romance. This woman is basically sold off to this alien on another planet to be his wife. And the whole goal of this union is for her to have children. She is failing at that. And so she is very, very, very abused by her husband. And you know, she's starved. He doesn't bother to try and learn her language to communicate with her. And she's bullied by the entire tribe. And it gets to the point where something happens and he suddenly dies. Well, in the tradition of this alien race, they this tribe needs a keeper. And so they contact his identical twin brother who ran off a long time ago to make his own life. And they're like, duty compels you to come back and be this tribe's keeper. Oh, and also your brother had a wife and now she is your responsibility. So reluctantly, he comes back to basically make sure all of these affairs are in order. He doesn't really plan on staying because he, again, has established his own life elsewhere. Sees this woman. She is, she's basically given up on life. She's very malnourished. She is very, she's injured, she's beaten. She has nobody to lean on because the tribe hates her. And he decides he's just gonna take her and leave. Well, the tribe doesn't let him do that. So she ends up in his care for a while. So his new plan is to basically get her into, get her to be self-sufficient and then leave. Things don't turn out that way and they end up running off together anyways. And they actually, like the author squeezes a lot of story into this. They actually spend a lot of time together, getting to know each other, living with each other. And again, on, aside from the darkness of her previous relationship with his identical twin brother, their relationship is very cute. He's very protective of her, not in the beginning, but you know, it builds and yeah. It was cute. I just said it was darker. It's cute. It's all cute. I only read cute books now, apparently. The next one that I read is Warlord and Huntress, and this is another shorter book. This is a novella by Anna Carvin, and it is about Rena and Darthan. And Rena is a trained assassin, and she is from a circle of assassins that everybody knows very well. They're very well known. And she is sent to kill a warlord whose name is Dar Darthan. Darthan. And she fails. She doesn't fail. You know, that's one of the things about the sect of assassins that she is a part of. They don't fail. And she failed. He is super turned on by the fact that she tried to kill him. And he ends up basically finding her and hunting her down. Finds out there's a lot more behind, because technically he in the book is painted kind of as the good guy. 
So the fact that somebody tried to assassinate him is kind of weird because he's trying to, you know, restore order and freedom throughout the land. And so he tries to get to the bottom of the reason why she was ordered to kill him and finds out that there's a lot behind that. And he ends up helping her with the things that are behind her orders to kill him. And in doing that, he confesses that he is super head over heels for her. And they end up having another very cute relationship. It's cute because she's like this very small, like very feisty assassin girl, and but she's also very innocent when it comes to things like relationships and men. So their relationship is very fucking adorable. I just, you know, I'm not used to adorable characters and or adorable um, relationships, but um, yeah, that's what I've been reading. And the most adorable book that I read. <laughs> because it just gets better from here, is owned by pirates. And that is number one in the Pirate series by Haley Travis. I looked up this author because I wanted to see what else she wrote. And she apparently does not write pirate romance. That is not something that she does. And you know, this, this book kind of got popular, so she ended up writing more into the series. And from what I understand, they are standalones, which is my favorite. But anyways, Owned by Pirates is about this <clears throat> this girl. I completely forgot the names of the two characters in this book. So it's like Tom, Samuel or I don't know. I don't even know why I'm trying to guess. But anyways, this girl, she's like 18. She's very young. Her father hates her. I don't know why. He just doesn't like her. He's trying to marry her off, but then he spreads rumors around town about how she's such a whore and she's never gonna make a good wife. So then men don't marry her and she gets a bad reputation, but then all he wants is her out of the house and is constantly complaining that she takes up money because she eats so much and she's like a twig, like how much can she eat? But anyway, so he, he does not like her and he's very abusive to her. She is very apparent. She has lash marks on her back. So he actually is physically abusive to her as well as emotionally abusive to her. And she's walking through town one day, you know, being her kind, shy self. And she's a seamstress, by the way. She makes stuff. She sews really, really well. That is what she does. And she's walking through town and she sees that there is a pirate ship docked at their docks and she eyes this captain and he's super super sexy and he gives her a little wink and a smirk i can't wink but you know he does that but like sexy and then she goes home and she's like well that was an experience and then the dad gets on her case about literally nothing just like existing and he's like you know what i'm getting rid of you once and for all so he grabs her by the arm, he takes her down to the dock, and he's like, I am going to sell my daughter to you pirates. Whatever you have, I'll take, she's worthless. And this pirate captain is like, I will give you like a million, no, it's not a million, it's like, it's, some, it's, it's an outrageous number for the time, and he gives him quite a bit of money to buy this girl. And basically, he fell in love with her at first sight and just wants to protect her. So he buys her, he brings her onto his ship. He doesn't want her sleeping with the crew, so she sleeps in his cabin. She's she's very innocent, she's very virginal, it's, you know, has no life experience outside of her abusive father, basically. And yeah, it turns into her basically being absorbed into this crew as like a little sister, except to the captain, who's absolutely head over heels for her. And wants to do everything he can to get her to trust him so that he can get into her bloomers. And it's really, really cute. He's just so dang protective of her and so nice and so gentle to her. And just seeing her come of age and come into herself because, you know, she's never really been able to express herself. She doesn't really know who she is. And she, he brings that out in her and I just thought it was so cute. If you want a minimal drama, minimal angst pirate romance, I mean, it's, it's cute. The next one that I read, ugh, this is probably my favorite that I've read in, the, in, a, in a while. And it is called Until the Stars Fall by Vanessa Rassanen. Rassan, and it is a fey romance, which I don't often read because I don't really care for fey romance. I, they're just kind of like, they all kind of seem the same to me. But I mean, you can say that about any genre of books. It's just that fey is that thing that like, I don't usually care. But anyways, I found this book on the audiobook website that I use which is awesome because if I can just listen to it while I'm doing other things, I tend to read more books, uh, especially when I'm very busy. So Until the Stars Fall 
is a story about Leica, who is a human, and her mother and the queen, the Fae Queen, were very good friends, so she grew up in court, basically. And humans and Fae don't really care for each other too much, and there is talk of a rebellion, but nobody knows who's really behind the rebellion. So you have Leica, who is a servant, and you have the princes. You have, I don't remember, it's like Brennan or something like that, is the irresponsible younger prince. And he likes to sleep around and he's he's got no duties because he's not firstborn. And then you have Connor, who is firstborn, and he's got the weight of the kingdom on his shoulders because his father is basically obviously grooming him to be king one day. He's very, very responsible. He, he usually is the one to get punished in his younger brother's stead. His mother, before she died, told him to protect his younger brother, so he feels this, like, huge responsibility for him. And so he's, you know, he's the very, like, reserved older prince, and he's kind of grumpy all the time because he's got a lot, again, he's got a lot on his shoulders. And Leica is childhood friends of these princes, not so much Connor, but the other one, and she is in love with him, super in love with him. Even though she knows that he like goes around, you know, screwing other women like all the time, she is just super in love with him. And he really likes her too, but obviously this relationship is very forbidden. And things happen. One of the Fae in the palace tries to kill her simply because she is human, and so she is sent away to learn self-defense. She is sent away to go to her mother's extended family to learn self-defense. She comes back two or three years later, being a whole new woman, still madly in love with the younger prince, and things happen. And she is sentenced to death. And the younger prince is arranged to marry another princess from another land for as like a political union and obviously she doesn't like that but when she Connor ends up feigning an engagement to her to save her life saying that she and him are engaged she can't that and she can't be executed so now they have to pretend that they've been engaged the whole time and they love each other uh, in order to prevent her execution, and in doing that, obviously, their feelings grow. And the reason it's enemies to lovers is because, you know, he's always gotten in the way of his younger brother and her love story, and she doesn't like him because he's very grumpy, and she also doesn't like that she was forced into a marriage with him, but... I mean, and he doesn't like her because she's very foolish. He thinks she's very stupid and like, you know, is annoyed by the fact that she keeps trying to intervene with his younger brother's political marriage. And so, you know, things are very intense in the beginning, but then like any enemies to lovers, they, they start to warm up to each other and it's a very slow burn story and I loved the world building. I... I just enjoyed everything about it, to be honest. Leica kind of got on my nerves once or twice, but can't really be helped. I feel like main characters always get on my nerves a lot, but it was it was a really good story. So, as promised, I'm going to read the ones that I DNF'd because there were a few. So the first one that I DNF'd was The Throne of Shadows, which is number one in the Shadow Face series by Evangeline Anderson. The reason I DNF'd this book is, so it started out really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed the, you know, the, it's another fae romance. I, apparently I'm trying new things. And you have this woman who is, she's a princess. She's not your typical fae beauty, where fae in this world are very slender, like super model-y, very petite, very beautiful. She is very curvaceous. Um, I can't remember whether or not her blue hair was something that was undesirable or not, but she has like dark blue hair. She just isn't pretty to the fae court that she lives in. She is being forced into a political marriage with the prince of a neighboring kingdom, who just also happens to be the prince who killed her I want to say brother. So obviously she's not into that and they end up getting married. So the reason that I wasn't really into this book is because she's apparently a very powerful fae and this prince from the neighboring kingdom kind of brings out her her abilities and um I just I to be honest I just wasn't a fan of the kinks that were involved in this book and maybe you are 
Maybe you are a fan of the kinks that were involved in this book or between these two characters, but to put it bluntly, in order for her to tap into her power, she basically had to be um, climaxing. <laughs> and one of the ways that she does this is, uh, I mean, our prince has a breastfeeding kink as well, so, you know, and if you have those kinks and if you think that is an awesome thing and you want to read it, no judgment here. I am just saying that for me personally, I thought it was odd and I was just a little bit sad that the, the dynamic between the two in the beginning was just kind of like forgotten as the book progressed. But anyway, so I did DNF that one. I think I got about 70% through that and I just didn't really care to continue. The other one that I DNF'd and I was actually listening to this book and I think a lot of the reason that I DNF'd had a lot to do with the narrator. I don't know who the narrator is, um, but it was Wanted by Lauren Beale and this is a B&E romance. And basically, you know, this guy, like when I was reading it, it, it sounded like a dark romance, it's a novella. And this guy breaks in and sparks fly and things happen. And I was like, that's okay, I've read worse. I've read way worse. <laughs> I've read books where the guy is a mortician and buries the girl alive to prove a point and they still bang when she's covered in mud. But, um, anyways, so he, he breaks, the, the, the book opens after he murders a couple, a very innocent couple, because he's looking for drugs and or money to buy drugs. And uh, that was very unattractive to me. I was kind of done from that point on because uh, I just, I'm not going to invest my time in a character that does that. Maybe you want to, not judging, it is fiction, we all know that, hopefully. And so after murdering that lovely couple, he runs to the next door neighbor's house who belongs to a registered nurse and she figures out immediately that he is uh, addicted to meth in particular. Because if you know anything about meth, then you know that people who are addicted typically will have signs, physical signs on their body, aka sores and stuff like that, that he is picking at, <laughs> which is just so unattractive to me. Um, but anyways, so he breaks in and the first thing that he does is, is fantasize about uh, the R-wording R her. And that, again, was just not for me. There's a time and a place, there's a, there's a way to put that, to put non consensual <laughs> I'm getting um, tongue tied here, but there's a way to make non-consensual interactions fit characters and stories and make them readable. I've read many, many books where, where authors have, have created a scenario that, that fits and is a uh, very, there's no right way to say this, but tactful, I guess. And this was not it for me. So I really didn't like the characters, uh, obviously the male in particular, and so I kind of was over it. And the other thing that I did not like was that the narrator made it 10 times worse by making him the most whiny teenage boy. You, like, he's not a teenage boy. He, boy, he's in his 30s, I believe, in the book. But the narrator just made him so whiny and so bitter and so, like, everything is everybody else's fault. I killed those people and it was their fault. I, I do meth and it's my, my wife's fault. I have these fantasies about you and it's your fault. And I am sorry. No. Again, no judgment to the author, no judgment to people who want to read this, but I just couldn't. I just wasn't in that headspace. And like I said, I have been into cute cinnamon roll romances apparently the last three months. So maybe I just wasn't in the right mood to read something like that, but I dropped it pretty quickly. I think I dropped it like 10 pages in. I was over it. Anyways, I am also in the middle of I Married an Incubus from uh, by Regine Abel. I've never read Regine Abel before, but I see her books all over the place, so I thought I would give it a try, and the cover for this one looked awesome. Um, and then I'm also reading Sweet Berries by C.M. Costa, which is in the Cambridge Creek series, and I really oddly enjoyed Morning Glory Milking Farm. It was absolutely ridiculous, but it was such a happy, like, fun 
ridiculous story that I have decided to pick up Sweet Berries and see if it is along the same lines as that. So those are what I'm reading. And that was quite a bit, but if you stretch that out between like three or four months, I'm not reading that much. I, I'm in the middle of a few different books right now. I'm probably going to read more books by the authors that I just mentioned because I did enjoy a lot of them. But otherwise, I'm not setting any reading goals for myself for a while because like I said, I have a lot of events coming up. I have my new book coming out. I always have a book that is sort of on the darker side that I released during the Halloween month. And that is my book this year. Usually they're standalones. I may or may not make this one a duology or possibly a trilogy. We'll see. It all kind of depends on how it is received and what I decide to do afterwards. Anyways, I am very busy. <laughs> So I do apologize for not being here and doing videos for you guys. I am happy that you're all here. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 700 subscribers and unlike everything else that I feel like I need to do by myself, I can't do this without you guys. If you want to check out my book in October, please do so. It is out for pre-order right now on Amazon. I would really appreciate it. If you read any of those books or want to read any of those books, or if you have any suggestions, put those in the comments. Literally, any comment or interaction that you have with this video really helps me out in growing my channel. And until next time, happy reading. Love you all. Bye!